Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack today. I'm back with pack number 11 in my 1987 Donner's Wax Pack Mustard Rookie Card Chase. I've included the link to the video when I cracked the very first pack. In the video, I explain what I'm chasing. I've also created my cool checklist to show what we've pulled as we cracked all these mustard packs. So as usual, as I'm cracking the pack, I'm going to give some commentary about, you know, uh, something that I find interesting about the player, um, or maybe some memory I had from the player back in the 80s. Um, and then when I'm done with the pack, I'll choose what I thought was the best card and my favorite card out of the pack. So it's been a while since I've cracked one of these mustard rookie card pack chasers. Let's see what I can get. I mean, I've already got, as you can see, Bo Jackson, Mark McGuire, Barry Larkin, which whatever for whatever reason, I forgot to put on the original checklist, and Pete Incavili in my consolation. So we'll get back to that in a second. Let's crack this pack and hopefully get something cool. Maybe a Bonds, um, maybe a Greg Maddox. You know, those, those are cards that I've been chasing for a little while. Now this pack's tearing a little bit. Okay. Looks like, oh, well, we've got a Mark McGuire on the back. So I think this is like my third McGuire out of all of these um, loose packs that I've gotten. Okay. So Greg Pryor um, was an infielder with the Royals. I think he spent a little bit of time with the White Sox as well. Pretty much a backup utility guy. Um, as noted on the Donruss card, didn't get much playing time aside from like a defensive uh, replacement, maybe a pinch hitter, pinch runner. Next is Jimmy Key. We feature Jimmy Key quite frequently in the 1988 Tops Mini League Leaders box. Um, Key came up as a reliever with the Blue Jays in 84, and then after that was a major league starter. Pitched with the Orioles and Yankees. Um, didn't get 200 wins, but got up into the 160, 170, 180 win category. Donnie Moore, very tragic baseball story. If you want to learn more about that, just uh, brush up on the 1986 American League Div um, Championship Series between the Red Sox and Angels. Angels had it sewn up. It looked like in Game 6, uh, the Red Sox stormed back. Dave Henderson home run won it. Um, and Donnie Moore tragically committed uh, suicide. I don't think it was next year, but it may have been the year after that. Uh, we have a Diamond Kings. Diamond Kings are one of my favorite subsets in the Donruss early years. Really enjoyed them as part of the base set. Um, and then for whatever reason, and I think it was 92, they moved to an insert set. Diamond Kings, still one of my favorite, like I said, subset. Here it features Rick Roden, who pitched for the Pirates and the Yankees as a starter for a number of years. Mike Fitzgerald. Um, has a little bit of notoriety tied to him. He was part of the mega blockbuster deal between the Expos and the Mets. He went from the Mets to the Expos to become their starting catcher. Unfortunately, he is replacing Gary Carter, who was a fantastic all-star. If we look at the back of the card, hopefully I'm not gonna spoil anything awesome. There's part of that blockbuster trade, if you see right there. It included Hubie Brooks, Herm Winningham and Floyd Yeomans for Gary Carter. Talk about a one-sided trade. Um, Fitzgerald never really panned out as a catch, as the starting catcher for the Expos. And Gary Carter in 1986 went on to win a World Series with the Mets. Reggie Jackson, uh, first Hall of Famer. Um, here he's shown with the Angels. Toward the later part of his career, he would spend the 1987 season with the Oakland A's and then would retire um, with over 500 home runs in his career. Here he's got 548. I want to say, oh, I wish I could remember. He finished 570, I want to say. Lloyd Mosby, starting center filler for the Blue Jays for a number of years. Kind of an underrated uh, all-star. Um, was a defensive wizard. Um, fortunately, he had a number of run-ins with Blue Jays front office, as did George Bell. Um, and eventually, Mosby was traded to the Tigers, where he spent, I think, about a year, and then his career ended prematurely around the age of 32, I want to say. Next up is Buddy Bell, who is another underrated star. Uh, Buddy Bell was a third baseman for a number of years, a gold glove first baseman at that. Had over 2,000 hits in his career. 
Um, unfortunately, didn't get a lot of play for the Hall of Fame. Um, Bell spent some time with the Indians. He spent some time with the Rangers. Uh, finished out his career with the Reds. Um, it's it's very interesting. Um, he played, I think, a couple more years. But as you can see, uh, had over 2,000 hits in his career. You know, didn't have them much in the way of home runs. Just... I think he got close to 200 home runs in his career and around 1,000 RBI, but defensively was a great third baseman. Bob Tootsbury, this is his rookie card. Uh, came up with the Yankees, uh, spent some time with them in 86, and then bounced around in the minor leagues with the Yankees and Cubs for a little bit. Finally found his groove with the Cardinals in 1990, 1991, and was a, a, a starting pitcher for quite a while and had some success pitched with the Rangers I think he's now a little bit more known as a sports psychologist kind of guy uh, and helps um, you know major leaguers with some you know some of their uh, issues when it comes to you know sports imagery and and their ability to be at the top of their game okay next up cards are kind of sticking together a little bit Juan Samuel who is a player that we featured quite a bit in the 88 tops mini leaders uh, league leaders box uh, came up with the Phillies and had some great years in 84 85 86 and 87 um, you know was pretty good defensively offensively was, was pretty good as well strikeouts would pile up a ton um, he did strike out quite a bit eventually moved on to the Dodgers um, and had a relatively successful playing career Mark Grant uh, here with the Giants I believe he was a member of the Padres I think he was part of the Kevin Mitchell trade I'm not entirely sure. Um, Mark Grant was mainly a reliever, middle innings guy. Let's see if he was part of that trade. Nope. Um, I think that trade happened in the next year, I want to say. He went from the Giants to the Padres, uh, but I can't remember if he was involved in, in that Kevin Mitchell deal. Ken Griffey Sr. Um, here featured with the Braves, spent a number of years with the Yankees, um, the Reds. Uh, and finished out his career with the Mariners, playing alongside his son. Uh, Griffey had a decent career. Um, wasn't a superstar, but had a couple of all-star years in there. Tony Bernizard originally came up with the Mariners, was their starting second baseman, moved on to be with the Indians as their second baseman. I think the White Sox were in there somewhere as well. Um, Bernizard was the starting second baseman until, I believe, Carlos Bierga showed up in the scene a few years later. Ed Nunez, a middle innings reliever for the Mariners. I don't remember too much about him, um, but spent, you know, four or five years pitching in the middle innings for the for the Mariners. And then our final card, uh, another Mark McGuire. Uh, one of my favorite cards, Mark McGuire, was also part of our 1988 Topps Mini Leaders League Leaders box. That's kind of a tongue twister. McGuire is one of my favorite players. Uh, notwithstanding the steroids, even before he came to the Cardinals as part of my, you know, favorite team, he was a superstar with the A's. Uh, his rookie year uh, was 1987, um, where he hit 49 home runs, 118 RBIs. Eventually, he was key contributor to the A's um, World Series run of 88, 89, and 90. Uh, won a ring with them in 89. Uh, McGuire set the major league single season record with 70 home runs that would be broken by Bonds. Uh, a couple of years later. Uh, it's too bad that steroids kind of had to clout his career. I definitely think he was a Hall of Famer, and I think eventually he'll make it in. He was quite a bit more contrite and apologetic, uh, where some of the other players like Bonds and Clemens deny it still to this day. In fact, uh, this is my favorite card out of the pack. I know it's a little bit of a homer. It's, you know, the most valuable card out of the pack, but Mark McGuire was definitely a superstar. It's unfortunate that he, um, you know, had to get mixed up in the steroids, but still, early on in his career, before he juiced, uh, he did have quite a bit of power. Um, and I think, you know, some poor decisions, uh, especially in 94, 95, when he had quite a few injuries, maybe led him down the steroids route. Um, but anyway, uh, one of my favorite players. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Also share with me in the comments what your favorite card or what you thought was the best card in the pack. Until next time when I'm back to crack the next yellow pack of 1987 Donner's goodness in my mustard rookie card chase.